Okay, so if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're having trouble finding exploit one. So I'm gonna go over how to do that and how to break it down. First off, exploit one or capture, it's in capture one PCAP. Um, you're gonna wanna open that up because we're gonna go over first off how to find it, the hints for it, and then how you can actually find all this information. So the first part of this, you suspect unauthorized hacker has broken into one of your Bank of Virgil guestbook web pages and used their script to show user cookie data. So if we think back to the activities we've already completed, that sounds like a cross-site scripting attack. So that means that they are able to insert a script into a page that has some sort of input text box on it um, and get pretty much whatever information they want out of it. In this case, cookie data. So step A, we have to find the sub suspicious packet. Um, so first off, I'm gonna go into our lab here and we are going to, according to our um, project lead the way directions, go into activities, our P3234 files and our capture one. So this is the capture data we got from capture one. And it was saying that in our Bank of Virgil guestbook web pages. So in order to actually know what's what here, um, I don't want to go through all these. I want to find an easier way in order to find, okay, what transmission links to that guestbook page. So I'm going to open up the website. I'm going to go into connections, CTS, and it's going to bring me to that Bank of Virgil page and I could just log in. Should be admin, password. And it gives me access to the site. Okay, so it wants us to find the guestbook web pages. So I'm going to go through these menus and see if I can find anything that relates to a guestbook. Uh, vulnerability, SQL. I did say that this sounds like a cross site scripting, so I'm going to look in these two. What's your name? Okay, signed guestbook, perfect. This is what I'm looking for. It's related to the cross-site scripting and it's looking at that signed guestbook. So I found the page that could possibly have the vulnerability on it. Now I need to find the vulnerability itself. So in our Wireshark, I'm gonna try to find transmission between this page and a host. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to apply a filter and actually search stuff in here. In the project file, it gives me a hint that I can use. So since you're researching web page content, I can use this filter to try to limit some of my options. So up and apply display filter. What am I gonna use here? Content type, okay. So this should narrow down my results a little bit. All right, it brought some of them down. I still got a lot of packets going here. And you could go into all of them, that's fine. But I wanna try to narrow this down even more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this web page and see is there anything on here that might be specific to this page and this page only. Name and message, probably seen on other pages. Um, name test, possibly this message could be specific to this page. So I'm gonna try to find that message. So if I do control F, it's gonna give me the option to search for something. I'm gonna do this is a test comment. And I'm gonna put the period at the end. Um, I don't wanna dis, I wanna change the display filter to a string because it is just a string value on the page. I'll make it case sensitive because it is here. Um, it will make it more specific for me. And then I don't want to look in the packet list. I want to look in the packet details. So I'm going to look at find. Okay, so it brings me to one. Let's see. Sign guestbook on click check form. All right, that's something. This is the test comment. All right, so it found that test comment that I was looking for. I don't see anything else specific on this page. JavaScript pop up. Okay. Let's see, I'll do find again, 234, okay. Guestbook test, this is a test comment, perfect. I'm looking for that. Guestbook comments, name, message, okay. 
this is something. This is that cross-site scripting attack. And not only is it a scripting attack, but it's referencing what the hacker was trying to do. If I bring this back over, their script to show user cookie data. And the only reason I know that is because if I look at this, window.document.write, document.cookie. You don't even know what any of this script has to mean. You do because you saw it in one of your lessons earlier. But just the fact that the word cookie is in here, I know they're doing something with the page cookies. So I'm going to mark this as my suspicious packet. Number one is 234. So if I go to A, find the suspicious packet, I got packet 234. I could take a screenshot of this packet. Identify the web page and the few lines of code that prevent this vulnerability. Okay, so we found the packet. We found the line that is suspicious, but how can that be prevented? So this goes back to one of the earlier uh, activities that we did in the lesson going over how do you prevent cross-site scripting? So in order to do that, we go back to the web page. If you remember, we went into this, um, let's see, site security. And in here, this prevents script security. So it will go script security. It's currently set to high. You can set it to low, medium, or high. The security level changes the vulnerability type. Okay, so it's set to high. We know it's set to high. That's good, as it should be. But let's see what it was set on this stored page. And the way we're going to do that is we actually have to look at the source and look at the source file to this. So I'm going to click on view source. And this is going to show me that cross-site scripting source. So, make this a little bigger here. Maybe. There we go. All right, so if message trim sanitize message input sanitize name input okay so this is the security right here because the page is currently set to high security it's going to strip any slashes um, look at the escape string any special characters it's going to get rid of out of that message sanitize or remove it from that message input same for the name it's going to look at the mysql it's going to get any slashes out of there and it's going to remove any special characters but what if this page was set to low? So I'm gonna click on this compare button and it's gonna show me all the values from high to low, medium, low, of how this website can actually be sanitized. And this is gonna answer my question, B, identify the web page and the few lines of code that prevent this vulnerability. So on this web page, what would prevent this vulnerability would be having the high stored XSS source so that it would sanitize all three of these. If it was set to low, which it could have been and that's why this attack happened, not everything is put in here. From the message, it gets rid of the slashes and the SQL, but from the name input, it only gets rid of this escape string. It doesn't get rid of anything else. So as you go up in those levels, you can see Okay, sanitize if it replaces the string with script. And then you go up further. And now it gets rid of everything. So what could prevent this from happening? Right here. This could prevent this from happening. This is that screenshot you're going to want to take. The last piece of this problem, or I should say how you're going to document this problem, is documenting your work. So what information may have been compromised. If I look at this, the first piece of information that's going to be compromised I can see, and it's actually in the question itself, is going to be cookie data. So it's going to allow when they put their script in here, the cookie data or the user cookie data from the website to be sent to that hacker. I can use the screenshots that I got from here just to show that's happening. Describe how you found each exploit. Well, the first exploit I found by going to the web page, searching a specific piece that was on this site in my um, capture. And then as I went through the capture, I noticed that the 
script was embedded or it was the cross-site scripting embedded within the message. So that's how I found that. And then describe the difficulties and any hints you received. So the hint I received was the one that BLTW gave me. I used um, the page content type as a filter. And then I also used the fact that the web page has specific content on it as a hint for me as well, because this helped me narrow down my search results within my capture. So as for exploit number one, this is all the information you would need from there. You just need to document it and put it in a presentable form that could be displayed to a client or could be displayed to a technology department of the client of how you found it, where you found it, and how you can prevent this from happening.